for, for what you've uh, said this evening. Um, you re referred um, to a lot of the conflicts being religious. I, I wonder what your thoughts are, um, uh, and you mentioned it in, in part, that within Islam, for instance, it, it is not a war of, of Islamists against Christians or other non-believers. A lot of them are fighting amongst themselves. Um, I, 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 and what, what, what do you feel if you like, the scriptural significance of, of that might be. But because many moderate um, believers in Islam w would utterly condemn the violence uh, that, that is going on. Um, a, 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 and yet, a, as a religion, that, that is utterly uh, divided against I itself. Um, a, and whether you see within that some fulfillment of Bible prophecy as well. Yes, I do. Um, first of all, just the history of why there is this conflict. When Muhammad died, the issue was who should succeed him. And there was a group which said, well, we want the most able and competent person that we have to become the, the, the head of this grouping that, that Muhammad had formed. And that man was Abu Bakir, who I mentioned in the talk. Muhammad's greatest, closest friend who had fled with him from Mecca to Medina and had been with him all through the, the struggles and the, and the troubles that they had in getting what we now know as Islam off the ground. So Abu Bakir became the leader. But there was another group who said, no, 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 no. Anyone who succeeds Muhammad must be either a relative of his or an imam, a teacher appointed directly by God. So their man was Ali, who was Muhammad's cousin and son-in-law, married Muhammad's daughter. And they said, no, Ali is, is qualified to take over from Muhammad because he's part of the family. And the two groups fought, and Ali was killed. And the, the Shiites, and, and, and the, the word Shia in, in Arabic has got the name Ali in, embedded in it. They are the followers of Ali. The Shiites have never forgiven the Sunnis for killing Ali. Uh, and the Sunnis don't like the Shiites either because they believe that in the religion that the Shiites have developed over the years, there is idolatry as the Sunnis see it, which is why ISIS wants to destroy the holy cities um, in Iraq of the Shiites. So that's the historical background. Now, what about the Bible? Well, turn to Ezekiel 38 now, and, and let's see that these two groupings are actually identified in the pages of Bible prophecy. So Ezekiel 38, which I'm not going to attempt to expand in its totality, but Ezekiel 38 talks about a great invasion of the land of Israel, right? So you've got the phrase there in verse 18, the land of Israel. And this invasion comes from the north, right? into the land of Israel. Verse 15. Thou shalt come from thy place out of the north parts. And verse 16. Thou shalt come up against my people of Israel. So without going into political detail, this is an invasion of the land of Israel from the north. I believe it's headed up by Russia. And that verse 1 should read, The prince of Rosh, Meshach, which is Moscow, and Tubal, which is Tobolsk. But who are their allies? Verse 5, Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya. Persia, which today is Iran, is allied with this northern force that comes against Israel. And that's exactly where Iran is sitting politically today. It is allied with Russia. Russia helped them to build the nuclear reactor at Bushir. Mr. Putin has been to Tehran. He's talked to Ayatollah Khamenei, who's the spiritual leader of the Iranians. The Iranians and the Russians are on the same side. And that's what Ezekiel said they would be. But this invasion is, is protested against um, in verse 13, Sheba and Dedan and the merchants of Tarshish, with all the young lions thereof, shall say unto thee, Art thou come to take a spoil? Hast thou gathered thy company to take a prey? Now, Sheba and Dedan 
historically, geog geographically, are the Arab states at the southern end of the Arabian Peninsula. So Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, United Arab Emirates, Qatar, that, that, that grouping down there. And the merchants of Tarshish, the Bible name for the British power. And if you want to understand how that works, talk to Matthew. I'm not going to attempt to repeat what he did at Prophecy Day last year. But isn't it interesting that Britain, having withdrawn its naval powers in 1971 and closed down all its bases east of Suez, is now, has now found £15 million out of the depleted defence budget to build a naval base in Bahrain, right in the Persian Gulf, which puts Britain right in this position of, of chapter 13 of verse 13 of chapter 38. So, yes, the two groupings, the Shiites and the Sunnis, are identified within Ezekiel 38 and they're on opposite sides. Now come with me to Isaiah 60 and see what the end of it all is. Uh, I guess I really should have included this in the talk, but we'll look at it now. Isaiah chapter 60. And God speaking to Israel. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Verse 3, and the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. End of verse 5, the forces margin the wealth of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. The multitude of camels shall cover thee, the dromedaries of Midian and Ephah, all they from Sheba shall come, they shall bring gold and incense. That's the people from the, the, the bottom end of the Arabian Peninsula. The Queen of Sheba came to Solomon and brought gold and spices and incense. Well, it's going to be repeated when Solomon's great descendant, the Lord Jesus Christ, sits on the throne. And verse 7, all the flocks of Kedar shall be gathered together unto thee. The rams of Nebaioth shall minister unto thee. They shall come up with acceptance on mine altar and I will glorify the house of my glory. I believe that's the, the northern grouping, the Shiites descended from Ishmael. And they're all going to come up to Jerusalem and worship. They already believe that there's one God. They call him Allah. They need to know that his name is Yahweh and that he's revealed himself in the Bible, not in the Quran. But that won't be a difficult lesson for them to learn. But they will all come and they will be part of the kingdom that's going to be set up when the Lord Jesus Christ returns. So, so yes, Islam is definitely in the Bible. The origins of it are in Revelation chapter 9, which we won't look at now. Um, but the, the, these two groupings are clearly identified there, and their future is set out in Isaiah 60.